fashion. It just reminds me of some shit like back from like the 90s. To where the motherfuckers was having abortions and they had like Jewish doctors and things like that. And they was different as, what is it called? The, whatever it's called. That shit right there. And then without our consent. And just giving us, and then we wake up, and then we just have it like bleeding all over the place, and damn, it felt like we fucking died, or whatever the case may be. I would say, if strap up, if you don't really want to fuck somebody, don't fuck them. If you're just having a party for the day, it, it just remind me of this little thing that they're going through right now. Bro, they versus Wade. Is this what this conversation is about? And that's exactly what it's heading to. Yeah, no, I don't want it, and no, I'm good. I'm going to promote my children and everybody else and keep having these babies. You know, one thing, uh, Shante, about the actual um, thing, because if you ever know any women that, that have had um, been having problems with fibroids and stuff, uh, a lot of times women, you know, they, they have a lot of bleeding or an unusual amount of bleeding, like that's one symptom and whatnot. And like they said, um, Things from having issues with the bladder to constipation. Yeah, but they can still they can still have babies. My best friend, she had five boys. Okay. Um, oh yeah, you can still have it. It's just it gets to the point. And a lot of women, like I said, a lot of women actually living with fibroids and don't even know they have fibroids. Like a lot of women have fibroids for a long time before they actually even do something about it. But it's to the point when you get to the point that the fibroids, it was always when they said the fibroids was, was too much of this and too much of that is when they would go ahead and remove the actual, you know, remove the actual uterus from the woman. And, you know, once they remove the uterus, now you can't have any kids. Ten hysterectomies. I'm not really too good with that. That's like just taking something up out of you without your permission. Well, they definitely taking something up out of you. They taking your, um, they're taking your actual, um, your uterus, I mean, your ability to reproduce and have a child, so that, that's gone. But yeah. Really comfortable with this conversation, and I'm about to get ready to get my dinner, but I stay in. DJ, how you feel about it? Matter of fact, sis, secret sister, how you feel about it? Yeah, secret sister, Ray, we're going to get to you the secret sister. Go ahead and unmute your mic, sister. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, um, fibroids actually run in our family. Um, my mom had them, um, um, and she had to have a hysterectomy because it uh, actually got, so what it was is her gynecologist uh, did not see it, which I think is full of shit. Um, that's why now we only see black doctors, but the, the thing is, is um, my, me and my daughter, my daughter had fibroids. They broke hers up. But with me, I had fibroids in both my breasts. And um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, I didn't know about it. Uh, once I had my daughter, I breastfeed for the first year. And I don't give my kids, um, none of my kids had inoculations. Um, and they are healthy, but... Actually, the fibroid in my circumstance actually um, helped me because when they found that I had the fibroids in my breast, uh, it was so long gone that would you believe that it turned cancerous? And I had to, I didn't want my breasts removed because I was too young. I was only 22. And um, I didn't want to go through early menopause with them taking my breasts off. Uh, but I was feeding my my daughter and breastfeeding her. And um, then when I got done, I was pumping because I had to go to work. And I noticed it was pink. And I called my mom and we went to the emergency room and it was blood and I had to immediately go and have the cancer because it, they, the one doctor told me it was a fibroid. Then when I went to the doctors, I mean, to the emergency room, they made me go directly 
too because it was spreading. And from that, I had um, I had to have a it, it spread through down to my uterus. Um, I had to have a utero uterus ablation, and that's where they scrape all of you know all the wall of your uterus. Um, and then it went to my bladder. And I told us they only have half a bladder. So a lot of times um, what we need to do is all of us as black people, because um, we actually are not supposed to eat like what we're eating. And this is the white man's way of eating. I mean, you figure they eat people. So we don't do that. Um, we are nature nature people we were um the ones that roamed this land with the animals we didn't need them we knew how to make medicine and the poppy and all that we did surgery with just the cocaine leaf and all that kind of stuff so what what i got on this whole thing for is i i'm trying to bring the family back to the root, uh, the root of the cause, like the beginning. And I'm talking about where our ancestors was. Before the white man came, we never need any shots. We didn't have any illnesses. We weren't dying by, by drones. When they came, they made us sick. So it's obvious these names that they're putting on it, when you say fibroids, say white man. When you say hysterectomies, say white man. When you say cancer, say white man. Epilepsy, say white man. Everything is that because we were made, we were like, what's that truck built to be strong? We were just built for the land. Although I'll land on that. And I want you to stick around, sister, because definitely I want to hear more. Like this, like I said, I want to hear from a, a woman's point of view, perspective and whatnot on this actual topic. Because when I actually formed this topic, this is what I, I actually thought about, just hearing the sisters, just hearing their, um, you know, hearing what they, they, they have to go through with this situation like that. Like I say, for, for years, most of the time, you guys, you have the fibroids before you, the, it, it, there's even any kind of surgery, anything like that. So we just really want to have this space for the women we just really want to hear what you guys got to say uh, ray definitely go ahead and uh and unmute your mic what's going on i just wanted to add my you know one or two cents in from what i know about hysterectomies so uh when i was younger i learned about mississippi appendectomy i was wondering have any other ladies ever heard of that i posted about it a little bit uh, up in the jumbotron for those that haven't okay so secret sister has uh heard of mississippi appendectomy so basically what it is for everyone else that doesn't know, uh, and the most famous case was our sister, uh, Fannie Lou Hammer. She went in because she uh, she went for uh, to get a tumor removed from her uterus. And while she was in there, uh, they did uh, they did a, a hysterectomy on her without her permission. So, you know, could you imagine that you're going for something, you know, like that, and they were like, hey, you know, while we was in there, we went ahead and uh, took all, uh, we took away your ability for you to make children. And, you know, that stuff has happened. You know, the sisters, there's stuff telling how many sisters that you know, have things probably happened to they didn't say anything. Like I said, hers was just the most famous. And also, before I pass the mighty secret sister, because like you said, this is for the ladies. So I'm just trying to add something in it to hopefully get, you know, to get the conversation moving. I was wondering, has anyone heard of the Buck versus Bell case? For those I have not I have. those of you that have not heard about the Buck versus Bell case, that was a forced, steril forced sterilization law that to this day has never been overturned. So basically, they had this uh, this woman, her name was uh, Carrie Buck, and she was considered to be like a feeble-minded woman. And the Supreme Court basically said back in the 1920s, you know, it's okay to go ahead and force this woman, you know, to 
be sterilized against her will because we don't need any more people being brought to this world that are feeble minded. Their whole thinking behind it, from the way I understand it, is they were trying to like clean up the race or something like that by getting rid of the stupider people so only smart people keep making babies for the smart people. But after the Supreme Court passed that ruling or whatever, what happened was that got into the prison systems and then they started doing it to women without their consent and things like that. I want to say, uh, According to what the, what I'm reading in the jumbotron, over seventy thousand women were sterilized, you know, in the twentieth century alone. So I definitely just want to add that too. Oh yeah, and they um, I think you had quite a number of those women, and I believe out there in California was actually suing and stuff like that because they were forcing sterilization on a good amount of, of black women, and I think even some um Mexican women out there as well too. So uh, definitely, Ray, you um, you write about the uh, forced sterilization that they were also uh practicing here in america at one time or another yeah that goes and far past to yourself that goes to like the whole eugenics movement and things like that so you know anything that you know laws why they pass they always do something to target us everything they do is to weaponize you know against us like for example it's not a coincidence like we were talking about earlier how you know all these black areas have a problem with their water but i'm not going to get off subject go ahead secret sister Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm News Tutter. At, thanks, Ray. And News Tutter and DJ, thanks so much for having um, this conversation because this is something that um, health is something that I live with on a daily basis. If you guys only knew um, my story, my whole life story, uh, it would and the diseases that I have right now, my doctors, like they literally call me miracle because I should be dead. You, nobody lives with the things that I have. But, um, you know, once once the fibroid, in, in, to me, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> this is going to throw people off, but they were doing forced sterilization. And you know what they were doing that was so sick? They were doing uterine transplants. And what they would do is they would take one from a healthy black woman, telling her a lie, of course, and they would take hers or, you know, anything like that, and it would go to a white woman. And she had a better chance of getting pregnant. So like you said, Ray, yes. When we look at all this stuff and get to the, you know, go all the way down, it always starts and ends with the white man. You you know what I mean? And, and the thing is, is we have to start getting into our homeopathic ways. We have to start... Um, doing more yoga, getting in more in tune with our spiritual side, because believe it or not, I, I was a nurse. I was an ER or a nursing supervisor too. Believe it or not, your mind can heal your body. Me, I was just so far gone because I was in a 13 month coma. And when I was in that coma, the things that they did to me, I don't even know to this day. And when I came out the coma, I have all these diseases. You know what I mean? But prior to the coma, guess who I worked for? The government. I knew a lot, and it's almost like I wasn't going to shut up, you know, and things like that. So it seems like they said, okay, I'm going to give her every disease in the world. But like I say, I believe that the ancestors and our maker put me on this earth for a reason and no one and nothing is going to take me out until the message that's supposed to be made is out here and then I can sleep or I can rest assured when I transition on that note um I would like if y'all don't mind if we just take a moment of silence for our brother Agoon, who lost his beautiful baby boy 
and I was crying a, a lot. Um, if Ogun is listening, uh, I did send you something in your DM, um, and we got you back. Uh, we, I believe you have a lawsuit, but I know that your baby is bigger than the lawsuit. But it seems like now we have to start making them pay point blank period because that handsome baby he looked too healthy so somebody missed something and somebody needs to pay for it so for Ogun I want to say to Micah rest in power baby and you are now with the ancestors and please help us get through the rest of this moment of silence Definitely, definitely, um, definitely that my heart goes out to the family. I saw that earlier today. Um, um, uh, I think it was Lloyd. He, 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 he told me about it. He sent me a DM and um, asked me to try to get in, in contact with the brother. But, you know, I don't follow him. I wasn't following. He wasn't following me. So I didn't know how to actually do a DM for him. But I, I definitely, my heart definitely goes out to him and his family. Such a tragedy. And I hope, you know, they can just make their way through it. So definitely everybody keep keep that family in your prayers as much as you can. Please just go ahead and definitely say, take a prayer for the, for the, the poor child that, that's not here anymore. Original, I know you're trying to come up. I've been trying to go ahead and invite you to speak. You may have to come up out of the out of the actual space, brother. I don't know what's going on because I know you keep trying to speak. Go. I was just about to say, go ahead, original and speak. But original, if you can hear me, go ahead and maybe come up out of the room and then come back in and see if that'll allow you to speak. Because I know you, you keep trying to speak. I keep um, approving you to speak and you come up and then it's just like you, you get lost in the maze or whatever. So definitely come back. If you can, come out the room for a second and then come back in and see if that may that may make it easier for you to come back in here. The sequel system, I'm going to get to you. I just want to say something that you said. That, you know, I hear people say all the time, I don't want to come across as a conspiracy some kind of conspiracy nut. Let me see. Just had original. Original, he was just there again, and then I just lost you again. But I don't want to come out. Come original, across. This. Not to interrupt you, but original. If you go out and clean the cache, the Twitter cache, and then come back in, and it should be good. Okay, go ahead. Bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to come off as some kind of conspiracy nut <clears throat> because I've heard people say that before. That you know that they were taking these. That they was taking the, the black woman's uterus and they were they were giving it to um to white women and stuff like that to help them have children and stuff like that. You know, I don't know how real how real that may be. I don't know. I, I've heard that before. I've heard people say that. Um, that's jacked up if they're doing it. It wouldn't totally, you know, it wouldn't totally surprise us if it if it was happening. Unfortunately, like I said, um, I just don't understand why you have such a high level of black women. It seems to impact more so than any other demographic of, of, of women in this country. I know at times people were saying that, you know, I've heard them try to link things, everything from they talk about the chemicals that, that, you know, some of the sisters put in their hair and stuff like that, with the perms and stuff like that, that that may have played a part in it and this and that. There's really been no concrete evidence of my knowledge that they, they, that they can go ahead and confirm that this is why black women are more susceptible to, getting fibroids or anything like that. So I, I just, you know, I'm just a little bit stuck on that. I just, I would like to understand why black women more than any other group of women are being impacted by these fibroids that, you know, that they're having to go through these, these surgeries. And I'm glad that that article we read is saying that they have other, um, you know, they have other, other, other forms now are treating it without having to take a woman's uterus out, which is, you know, once you t take a woman's uterus out, and a lot of times, a lot of women I know that actually had the procedure, they actually already had kids, so, you know, they weren't they weren't trying to have any kids, anything like that, but if you have younger women who've never experienced the joy of having a child, and then that joy is taken away, you know, by, by fibroids or having to have a hysterectomy or something like that, you know, that could be just crushing to that woman, so... I definitely, um, you know, I definitely, I definitely would like to find out the science behind this. I definitely like to find out why black women 
are two, three times more likely than a white woman to actually have fibroids. And I also would like to know what's the actual breakdown race in terms of race or who has the most hysterectomy. We know it's black women, but I want to know by what margin do black women have more hysterectomies than any other group of women. I also want to know about the dating. I want to know about 50, 60 years ago, were black women having hysterectomies the way they have it now? Is this something that's become more of a, 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 a new phenomenon in, in, in this in this modern day, modern age, we know that what they're saying, diet and, and obesity and, and genetics, and blood pressure, and so many different things play uh, a part in this. I would I would even go to say I believe that the environment itself that we live in would probably also play a part in this as well too. So you know, I'm just I'm just a little you know I'm just a little interested as a man who have women in his family and, and women in his community that have been impacted by fibroids, by hysterectomies. You know, like I say, this is something that when a woman has a hysterectomy, this is something that, that you know, this is a major procedure here. This isn't just something minimal here. So we definitely um definitely gonna move it around the room. Original, I see I got you in, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you speak while you up in here. So original, go ahead and unmute your mic and then we're gonna get the U Ray and we're gonna get the U Secret System. Okay. Uh, I just want to share some quick information. There is a sister here in the metro in the metro Atlanta area. Do a search for her under the name the Herb Sister. Now, what she has done, she has created a, a solution that she. I was at one of her health symposiums where she shared with us that uh, this sister was taking her solution, and she went to the doctor, and a fibroid. She didn't know what it was. A fibroid came out of her. So she asked the doctor, she said, doctor, this came out of me. What is this? And he said, this is a fibroid. How did you get that? She said, well, I was drinking this and this came out. So the doctor told her to stop drinking the solution. And you, you know, sister, sister said, the hell I will. So check out her. She's online. Her name is the herbs. I can't think of her. Her name is e something, but she has been doing this for quite some time. And after hearing some people talk about fibroids uh, previously, fibroids primarily come from eating an excessive amount of meat and dairy products. So if you can cut the meat and dairy products out of your uh, eating habits, that could somewhat slow down those fibroids from uh, pro producing in your body. But I would suggest that everyone, every sister that's listening, Go to the internet and just type in the herb sister and contact her. She does have, I know, I haven't seen her in a while. She does, she used to have this thing called a sister circle where the sisters would get together and discuss issues pertaining to the sister's body and what they can do to improve things. So, and with things being the way they are today, I don't know if she does it virtually, but I, I've been trying to get in, but I don't know what's wrong with this thing tonight, but I guess because I was trying to share this information so that to ensure that people that people are aware, whether you're male or female, the first rule of you know, we all have to protect the sister's womb. That's by far that's by far the first thing that we have to do is protect that womb. So uh, just check her out. She's called the Herb Sister, S I S T H A, and uh, she has some other stuff on how to uh, detox the womb and other things where you can do this stuff naturally because I've been sharing her information with uh, sisters that I come in contact with. And some of them look at me sideways saying, what you doing with this information? I say, hey, baby, this is about this is about us surviving. This is all of our job. It ain't, it ain't about just a woman's thing. It's, it's all of our job. So I just want to share that. I don't know if this thing will cut me off, but I'm going to go back down and, and, and let you all talk. But well, her name is the Herb sister she's out in um i think it's conyers out in conyers out in i think like rockdale county out near stonecrest mall in that area out uh going out i-20 east but she's very good at what she does so i would say check her out and i'm going to see if i can find a number i can dm uh you news told her in uh, in dj and maybe you all could share her number if you text her she should text you back and just let her know what you're looking for and I'll look at uh, uh, DMing you that number so you can share that with some of the sisters so they can, you know, have a maybe have a, a a conversation or a consultation, some sort of consultation with her 
and she could share the information that she has been, you know, uh, gathering over the years. And I'll land on that. Thank you, Original. And um, yeah, that's definitely information that that all of the sisters in here can use. And uh, so definitely, um, you can go ahead and get that and share the number or whatever, whatever you can to go ahead and do that. And I know you said something about we're going to get to you, uh, Ray, and Secret Sister, but I wanted just to touch up on this one point that you said. Also, I want to say thank you to Dr. Deborah for your contribution to News Soda on Cash App. But I also want to say this here is that I, I, I get what you're saying about the diet and you're saying that about the consumption of meat and dairy and whatnot. So, but this is the issue I'm having with that because we know basically that in terms of dairy and, and beef and, 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 or just meat or whatever, that you'd be hard pressed to find a group of people that eat more meat than Europeans. Definitely you'd be hard pressed to find a group that, that drinks more milk uh, with the dairy products and whatnot. And I know that just being westernized and stuff like that, we eat a lot of meat and we eat some of the same stuff that they eat. But I mean, you're talking about a group of people that, I mean, they grew up with, with the cattle and the beef and this and that. And if you look at regions down in South America, like Argentina, Argentina eats more beef per capita than any other place in the world. I mean, they are just all about the beef. So I want to know exactly why I still are black women impacted more when we know for a fact that Europeans eat just as much meat, drink just as much milk, if not eat more meat and drink more milk than black women, black people. So why are there women who get fibroids as well too, but they don't get them at the, the alarming rate that black women get? Well, one thing that, that could be, now, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Dr. Nancy Turner Banks, she wrote that book, uh, Age, Opium, and Empire. I think it's something like that. But anyway, years ago, she was on a talk show, and I managed to get through. And I asked her, I, I had heard that they said that our digestive tract was longer than the European, so there's a, there are certain things that we may do, and it may stick with us longer because they're not like we are. And I asked her if she could confirm that for me, and she said, yes, it is true. So there are some differences between us and, and how, for the most part, uh, black people, we are lactose intolerant for the most part by default. And so sometimes putting certain things in your body that you're not, that your body is not accustomed to having could cause, you know, these kind of side effects to happen whereby you're developing the, the fibroids and other things. So that could be an issue as well, but I'm sure uh, that uh, sister, the earth sister, she could break this down, you know, to the T and let you know, because, and she's not the only one who has done this. I think, what's the name, um, uh, Queen of Four? She has done, I think, some work on uh, healing the healing the sister's womb as well, as well. And so I think that if, 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 if we just start connecting with people like them, they are experts in this field. I'm just passing on the information because I want all of us to have as much information as we can because we have to do this to ensure our survival. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to look for her number and I'm going to I'm going to DM you her number. I'm going to look I'm going to look for it in my phone. I think I still have it in there, and whereby they can either uh, they can text her. And I'm not sure, I think on her website, she may have some, I'm on the website now, I don't see anything that says- Hey, hey original, hey, original yeah. brother, hey, I posted it to the Jumbotron, it's, it's the oh. Dr. Herb system. Yeah, Dr. Herb she system, yeah. 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 and it says right here, she specializes in womb, she specializes, well, she's based in Atlanta, like you said, and she specializes in womb wellness expert who is focused on bringing health empowerment back into the hands of the woman and their families. I have helped hundreds of men and women with these issues like heavy, uh, I guess that's menstruals for men's M-E-N-S-E-S, -E -S, I guess that's menstrual. Fibroids, body toxicity, and fertility. I'm here to help guide you on your healing journey. So yeah, holla at the sister right there. Yeah, but I'm still gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna DM you that, I'm gonna DM y'all that number. I don't know if it's if I could put it out over there, over these airways or what I can No, this is her website. If you look in the Jumbotron, it's right there posted on the top left-hand bubble. 
It says okay. yeah. Dr. Herb's sister. Yeah, it, if it's public information like that, then go ahead. Don't you even have to worry about DMing us. Just go ahead and put it in the actual uh, Jumbotron so everybody, so they can get a chance. If they need to call there or whatever, they can get in touch with the sister as well. So, yeah, definitely go ahead. And if you want to say the number, you can say the number. You want to post okay. it in Jumbotron. That, you know, that, it's all good. I have issues accessing the Jumbotron. So let me give you this number. And I, <clears throat> I can see... There was one time I had shared the information and I accidentally called her. She said, text me. So if you text her, she should, you know, contact you. But the number is 404-244-5565. But I just want, once I saw your topic, I knew I had, I knew I had to call in. This thing, this app been acting kind of janky lately. So, but I knew I had to try to get in tonight because this is a serious topic. And I think that uh, as many of us that can share this information and make sure that sisters are okay, you know, and they're not having to go through all these surgeries and this, that, and whatever being mutilated, then we're good. We're good. But I'm gonna land. I'm I'm gonna land with that and let someone else come in. But I just I just have to I just have to get that fit in. I just I, I mean I have to. No problem, and, and brother, that that was greatly appreciated. So thank you, definitely. Uh, and if you have information like that, that's worth sharing. Definitely, that's what these spaces are for. So definitely, um, want to give a shout out to you, Miss uh, 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 Ma uh, Malika Secret uh, Secret Sister. I want to give a shout out to you for your contribution on Cash App as well. So thank you, definitely appreciate it. I'm gonna get the Ray in and I'm gonna get the Secret Sister again. And any of my other sisters that have anything up in the space as well, too, that you guys want to add uh, live, if you got anything that you want to say, please, by all means, y'all go ahead. Like I said, we definitely, um, you know, we, we're just the, um, we're just men. We're just trying to see exactly how we can help, how we can put this information out here, what we need to do to assist you. Um, we know how hard women's lives are and, and, and have something like this going on that you guys have to deal with. Millions of y'all have to deal with. A lot of times you don't even know that it's going on until it's almost too late. So definitely go ahead and please share any information, share any stories. Any, if you don't want to say a person's name or whatever, change a person's name. If you got anything that you can tell us, it could help any other sister in this actual um, space too, please, by all means, go ahead and share the information that's what we had it for. I want to do something, um, want to do something a little bit different. I don't want to have the same old spaces and whatnot. I want to have something that's informative, something that's going to be beneficial as well too. So we definitely, we definitely got to go ahead and start putting this information out the information that can help people save people's lives. That's going to wake people up and whatnot. We definitely got to go ahead and do that as much as we can. Ray, go ahead and unmute your mic. I just uh, wanted to add on. Hey, just Ray, real quick. I just want to say, check the Jumbotron. The sister, uh, the Herb sister is on right here on Twitter. It says Dr. Herb sister right there at the top, y'all. All right? Go, go ahead, Ray. My bad. My bad. No, you good. So I just wanted to add on a little bit to what I was talking about earlier. So, you know, just in case you came in late, I was talking about the Buck versus Bell case where uh, the Supreme Court ruled that, you know, if you were unfit to have children actually took that away from women and like i said that was never overturned but something that i forgot to mention was the asexuality act i don't know if anyone has ever heard of that but i just you know I, I love history for those that don't know but basically for those that don't know hitler actually got his uh ideas of eugenics from california a lot of people don't know that because with that asexuality act uh twenty thousand or so black people and some Mexicans who were deemed mentally ill, uh, you know, they, they were basically forced into getting sterilization, you know, sterilized and stuff. And like I say, he got that from California's laws. And then he uh, kind of, you know, obviously mixed into the eugen you know, the genocide of eugenics policies of the 1930s when he took power, I think like either 33 or 34. Or so I just wanted to share this, like, this quote that Hitler said, but you know, he was inspired by California and stuff. He was talking about uh, there is today one state in which at least weak beings towards a better uh, conception of citizenships are notice noticeable. Of course, it is not our model German Republic, but the United States. That's what Hitler said about the United States, and he took the game from us and used it to uh, do that to all, this, all those uh, poor people. So I'm going to land my plane on that. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, live before I go to Secret Sister, if you have something to say, Sister, you got anything, just go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get to you. And that goes for anybody that wants to speak to. So don't be shy, y'all. If y'all got something to say, definitely raise your hand. Secret Sister, go ahead and unmute your mic. Um, there was another thing that I have been, um, I have been, uh, using, like, and it's really relaxing. Um, I, I use, uh, Heavenly Women here, ever heard, in Brace Pangea. They're a black-based company also. Um, they might have a white face selling it, but I, I looked into it. It is a black based company and it's from Africa. It's a lot of herbs. And like um, they have uh, like the yawny treatment where, you know, you sit and you put the towel over and you sit on that. You put it, drop the thing in there and you sit over it. Um, it helps a lot with um, bacteria buildup. Um, any of that stuff and the tea actually um the tea you drink that tea and like your private areas just are are they don't smell at all like literally at all you know what i mean it might smell like the tea a little bit but um it it actually has helped because um when i went to the gynecologist um my five boys, I had four, and now I have one since I've been drinking this tea. So I could have passed, I, I don't know, I could have passed them. I don't know what's going on. But I know um, it's called Blissful Yanni, and it's um, Pangea, what is it? No, EmbracePangea.com. And they have like Yanni beads, you you know, a, a lot of women understand that from stuff and the staining and all that stuff that's something that we should get back into anyway because that's how we bathe that's why we don't smell like we as a people don't smell like them when our men are sweaty and what we call stinky they smell like a food and it's called onions when they do they smell like like dead dog wet dog they just, you know, it, it, they have, they come off like animal and they always have smelled like animal to me. Um, us, we have a natural way. We can really bathe in just water. And I would advise all women, do not stick anything in you unless it's your husband. <laughs> I mean, it, that was a joke a little bit, but... Don't stick up tampons, all that stuff. No, no. And as far as um, uh, Brother Totter, when you said, you know, you didn't want to be into any conspiracy theories, um, trust anything I say, I've worked it and I've seen it. And the government has done it. They, it's not, do you think they, no, they have done that. And they continue to do that. And then what they do is they say that the black community has the highest rate of abortions. I think we all can agree that's a lie. It's the white community that comes into the black community because white girl then fucks a black boy and daddy will kill her and take her out the wheel. So we know, she knows that daddy's little friends will never catch her coming into a black neighborhood to get the abortion. I know it sounds crazy, but this was all their design. This is how they design it. You know how they used to say, if you want to keep something from a black person, put it in a book. Well, if you want to keep something from a white person, put it inside of our neighborhood. You get what I mean? Because they do not understand us. They'll never understand us. They'll never get it. Just like I was telling, I was talking to DJ one time and I said, we could sit in a room, all of us, everybody right here, and we could 
the TV can be on watching a movie. And if we see some part of it, we don't have to talk. We give a look and we just get it. We just get it. You, you know what I mean? We look at each other, even when we smile and stuff, we know when something's wrong with that person. So, um, to you guys, I will say, um, because I had two children, two jobs and was going to school and I had to go to chemotherapy and radiation and I had to do it all alone because, uh, baby daddies, uh, he didn't, I didn't, he cheated. You only got one time to do that because I asked you when you, when you feel we're not getting along. We can have a talk and you can just break it off. What you do when you're not with me is your business. But when you do that, you bring maybe those health issues home to me. And I know, um, I know this is personal, but I will say it. I have no problem. I've only in my years, I've only been with three men. I advise women another thing that is unhealthy is being promiscuous we're we're not supposed to do that because sex is here um for a pleasure but we're really here to procreate that's what we're here for you understand what i'm saying um all this other little sick stuff that they're doing like over in africa they cut off the woman's clitoris and things like that but if you pay attention, do you ever pay attention, y'all? In Africa and other effort, like Africa mainly, I'll say, because when I go over there, they eat more plant-based diet. Even though they big or whatever, they eat more plant-based diet. And guess what? You don't see a lot of cancer. You don't see epilepsy. You don't see um fibromyalgia you don't see these things because one thing we're not supposed to do if you notice our fang teeth aren't long like theirs we're not supposed to eat meat that's not us lamb um and goat and stuff like that uh when we go and eat that if you ever pay attention that's much much um it's not tough at all but we're eating animals that you figure they're eating bugs when they eat, when they graze and they're eating that, um, the, the, uh, grass that we didn't already had chemtrails fall all in it. You got to remember that we're eating that. This is why a chicken wing doesn't look like a chicken wing back in the day. These things are huge. A chicken wing. Um, they are now, because now, believe it or not, we have a shortage of animals. But they have to have an animal. So guess what? They perfected making them. That's why we have big, everything is so big. And as far as fruit, um, I'm going to tell you, never eat a fruit that doesn't have a seed to it. That's how you know that it was, it was, you know, genetically made. You know what I mean? Because everything is supposed to be able to go back into the ground and grow. Even, I know this sounds gross, even bowel movement, you know, that's supposed to help things grow. I'm, a, I'm going on, a, I, I digress now. Okay. And let me get Ray. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna get to you in a second. Let's um, let Rivera um, come up here and speak. Go ahead and unmute your mic. All right. Um, I want to talk about food deserts. Um, I've noticed that everywhere that I've ever been, <clears throat> going from like back to the, I mean, I won't even say the 90s. 60,000s. Uh, 
when I when I moved to St. Louis, that was when I first witnessed the food desert. Um, it was mostly you know Dollar Generals and Family Dollars, and I, I didn't know what that was in my twenties. It wasn't until I came back home to Tulsa that a lot of the grocery stores that we had out north, we had like Homelands and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and to give you an idea, like what the proximity to North Tulsa, literally the nearest Walmart, and even Walmart doesn't have the most nutrition, nutritious items on their shelves. I mean, at least they have like, you know, vegetables and stuff like that. But they're like three miles. The, the closest Walmart to me is, I think, three to four miles away. Uh, but the closest Dollar General is literally 0 0.5 miles. And there's like six of them. So I remember me and the girl I was dating at the time, we were talking about um, the, the things that we were buying. I mean, we, I mean, this is 2016, and I'm I'm getting in my mid-30s. And I noticed that I'm sluggish getting up for work. I mean, I just didn't feel well all, overall. And I'm noticing you guys are talking about the things that you put in your body and, and how you treat your body. Uh, I just... I was sick as a dog. So, you know, I, I remember um, hearing about this guy, Dr. Seth, you know, everybody knows about him. And I haven't completely, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I'm just healthy. Right? But I noticed that when I started to eat dandelion greens, especially, and, and the thing that I was going to say about the food is, because I'm going to go on a tangent, I'm going to stop it here. The thing I was going to say initially about the food is, and I'm glad I did was we need to stop relying on the city to build. If they take away the home, the homelands, take away the sprouts, they take away the, the natural grocers or the black-owned uh, grocers who have, you know, if you live in a country like me, we used to have a dude named uh, Kearney's Food Stand, food, food, food and Vegetable Stand, and he would get fresh vegetables from his own farm. Well, he's no longer uh, around, but I think his children need to solve the building. But we need to go back to what he was doing raw shit. Um, like I said, I noticed that when I started eating different types of vegetables, other than broccoli, like the man-made shit, carrots, just, just the plain old stuff that you can get in the can, I noticed when I started eating the stuff, even even though it was on the shelf, I started feeling a little bit better. When I cut out the meat, I felt a lot better. When I started growing my own, like I have a hard hydroponic garden at home, um, I can get seeds off Amazon. I know you're supposed to get certain seeds. That's another thing. I don't even like going into that. You know, I'm, I'm just a, I'm a caveman when it comes to certain things. But I noticed that the, the stuff that I was growing, a lot, the taste, the flavor was a lot different. It was almost like what Dr. Simpson was saying was true. When you pull it out the ground, it's got life in it. And you can feel the life almost generating your body. So I think for, for us, we need to get back. I know it's hard for a lot of people to, to grow their own food. If you got soil, you can grow food. Um, I think it's important that we we uh, we get back to like like the sister and uh, some of your brothers were saying, get back to the natural roots and damn, leave some of that meat alone. Like I've I've completely cut out pork out of my diet, and I feel 110 110 percent better than I used to feel when I was eating ribs and hot dogs and you know just bullshit that you can get at Walmart. Absolutely. We're not going to have a long space tonight, y'all. This was just, you know, this was just something just we wanted to put on in half for everybody just so they can come out and, and just let us know exactly what's going on in terms of health with black women and, and fibroids and the hysterectomy. So we're not going to have a long space tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let uh, Ray get up here and say something. Um, and DJ, if you, you want to say something to close it out, and then we're just going to go ahead and close it out for the night. And we'll be back with a regular space tomorrow night talking about news-related issues. But we did want to go ahead and cover this health-related issue, too, because it is very important to us. And we want to just go ahead and uh, we definitely want to let women know that we're here for them. So I want to pre I appreciate it, all of the women that stopped by tonight. And those who just, just want to listen, appreciate you guys as well, too. So we definitely, um, like I said, we didn't plan on having a long space tonight. We just was going to go as long as people actually wanted to actually keep it going. But, you know, we, we, we understand, uh, you know, some women that, that may be a little hesitant to speak on this issue as well, too. So there's definitely no problem with that. I'm going to get to you, Ray, and then I'm going to get to you, Secret Sister. So, Ray, go ahead and unmute your mic. 
I'm going to be very brief. Um, you brought up a good point earlier, I believe, with you, uh, new title, when you were saying about uh, the chemicals and stuff that might be in that, the hair products and stuff. That actually got me to thinking, and, and I shared it in the Jumbotron. Uh, this this uh, link that I found, uh, it was from a couple of years ago. They did this study that said nearly 80% of hair products aimed at black women contain chemicals linked to cancer, infertility, obesity, and that's what the study found. So, this, you know, it's not like, you know, we're just tripping. That that's just is what it is. I remember seeing, like, uh, like I was going to get my hair cut, you know, when I was a little boy and stuff. And I'd see the women, they would get their perms and stuff. And if you would notice, like, the women that was getting the perms, the other women that were actually doing their hair, they'd have on gloves and stuff. So even as a child, I was thinking, well, well damn, if this stuff is that bad, well, you got to put on gloves, why would this person put it in their hair? Like, I, this is how I was thinking. I was, when, You know, I was a little boy. I was probably, like, 10, 18 years old. So I just wanted to definitely put that out because there was a quote that uh, Dr. John Henry Clark said where he basically said, and I'm, I'm summarizing it, he said that there's nothing that has ever come out of the mind of the European that has been meant to benefit black people. And that's, I mean, the older we get, I haven't found anything that, you know, that can say otherwise. And this brother's been 100% on point. And as far as, like I said, I'm not a health nut, but like the other brother said, like, I, I, I personally don't eat uh, pork. I, you know, I, I've tried to cut soda out of my, you know, diet and stuff and just drink a lot of water and stuff. And there was a book I read, and I'm not trying to, you know, get too deep in the religion, but it was by Elijah Muhammad. It was called, uh, the, the what was it called? The Way We Eat, The Science of Food. Eat to Live. Yeah, thank you. It was called Eat to Live. He has, like, a couple of volumes of the book. So if anyone would like to, you know, you know, pick up that book and read it, because from what I understand in the book, like, you know, like each, like a bell pepper, some are red, some are green, some are yellow. Each one is for a certain thing. So if like you're feeling like, you know, down or something, you eat the red one, it's supposed to like boost your, you know, like, you know, it, each thing that you eat, like you said, God has color coded it for that particular reason. So I want to definitely add that in. I don't want to get too deep into it, but like I said, if anyone wants to look into that, please look into it. Absolutely. Secret sister, go ahead and unmute your mic, sister. Thanks, Ray. That's just where I was going. Um, I was raised, in, you know, with the uh, and uh, with the Muslims, and I will tell you, um, their uh, diet is probably the best diet. And one thing about it is, um, I had gotten off of, but I'm starting to do now. Maybe new starter. Um, we could have a, a space where, you know, we fast. You know, and that's the day of fasting. And we'll come on here and just talk while we're fasting, but we will not put any um, things. That's another thing. Uh, the third thing and final is I still eat, drink my greens. Um, get get your greens. Get them green leafy vegetables. I do that every morning. And I believe that's what's keeping me so because of you if I, if I sent you, I'm going to send News Totter and um, DJ, I'm going to send y'all my medical record. And when you read that, you're not going to, you're not going to believe at all how in the world I'm so bubbly, how I can pull up, how I can, it's the greens every morning. I've never missed a day. And I do um, do a fasting and I think because we lost uh, a young soldier um, I think I might fast tomorrow for uh, him, his transition time, and um, and and you know speak with the ancestors and probably lay some libation out for him and things like that. So uh, I might do stuff like that. That's what I do when I fast. I actually go to the ancestors, I go to the thing and I start giving libation. I go to my brother's graves, pour some water, leave some fruit. Um, I sit, I talk, then I'm out. You know what I mean? But we got to um, disconnect. And th oh, the last thing, women, we all know, I don't know what it is they did or have done with us with birthing, but one thing about black women, we um, we hold water. 
we hold water heavily. I mean, um, in different, like if they're little, they might not hold as much, but we hold water. Everything goes to our, that, that's why you see a lot of black women that are oh, what they would, what the white man would call obese, but we have a different skeletal. We don't have that skeleton like them. And I don't know if y'all, if y'all are privy to uh, Baba Dick Gregory, you know, that's a smart man. I remember he did a test. He stood on a stage and he asked for another man that was his height. He asked him to a white man. He asked him to come up there and stand beside him. He said, "Y'all have all that. Pretty much, I'm paraphrasing, but y'all got all that smoke calling us a monkey. And look, when we stand, we got lo I got longer legs, and my hands are pretty much to my side. You have a long torso, and look at your hands. They're almost past your knees." And if you really pay attention to white people, their hands are pretty, pretty down there, down by their knees. And they have very long torsos. And I think that is because of um, our climate that we were alleged, uh, supposed to be in, you know. But I do know when I was younger, we had um, uh, milk, I think they were milk moms. They were called milk moms. And um, that's the milk we drank. I'm gonna be honest. We, so um, it wasn't nothing for neighbors. We go pay them and get us our little, you know, half a gallon of milk because they would always pump and do that. And everybody, uh, nobody needed all these inoculations. I think that has a lot to do with it also. Like the stuff that I found, guys, um, while being a government agent, it's it would take me a lifetime. I, I just try to hurry up and spit some of it out there um, as much as I can, just in case I transition before I can get it out to you guys, you know. But um, those is the things that they are doing. They do. And they wait. So when they say um, get a second opinion, first, go to a black doctor, an FBA doctor. Second, get your second opinion from another FBA doctor. Because one thing about a black doctor, they try to save everything. That's why I still have my breasts. They said, no, we'll just, re he said, we'll just remove the lumps. We'll remove the lumps and you can have your chemo and radiation, but you don't need to have your whole breast taken because that would send you into menopause, which I had a son that was, um, just, he was one, one and a half and my daughter was just born. Could you imagine me with, um, you know, going through menopause with two little kids? I could be the next person on the news, you know what I mean? But you can get off. I see a lot of people get off. A lot of women get off because of that menopause and that postpartum. All that is in their medicine, you know? So that's what I would want to say. But men, please, you also play a big part. And I know you don't think you do, but when we have sex and you deposit, your deposits um, help us get big, not just for the belly, but big. And if we're trying to make a baby, could you imagine all of your seed that I'm trying to hold in so that we can have a baby? And um, at the end of the day, you guys are, you are not taking care of yourselves. At 40, I would hope every man in this room has had their endoscopy, everything checked below the waist. You know, you need to get yourself checked because believe it or not, you guys could be depositing some of the diseases that we catch like fibroids, like things like that. Because I found out 
sometimes I, I got um, transferred some things and it was all because of whatever mood he was in and whatever mood I was in when we laid down and we had sex, believe it or not, our moods determine a lot too. And I'm a, I'm a land on that. Okay. Well, that, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty in depth there, sister. I'll, I'll say that much. Uh, DJ, I'm going to go ahead and let you, uh, get a final say. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Uh, you know, I just, we agree to a great, uh, do more smoothies, skip, skip more whole meals. If you're 40 and over, you don't need three square meals a day. You just probably need one to maintain it. If you do like hard type labor and just, you know, drink hella water, right? You know, the, the soda, I drank a Sprite for the first time in like, probably like a year, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a soda freak, trust and believe me, but you could do it, bro. Just more water intake. And obviously, uh, the soda thing is nothing more than a, uh, a, a taste bud sugary thing. You know what I mean? Find, find another natural sweet substitute. You feel what I'm saying? And get into making your own soda. You know, because soda really is a natural thing. But when they add all the chemicals and all the other stuff, it turns into bullshit. So I deal with that. But peace out, everybody. All right. And thank you to everybody who came and attended the space tonight. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back at our regular time tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you guys catch us. We'll have us a nice um, space going on. So we'll go ahead and tweet that space out sometime in the uh, morning or afternoon. So you guys just go ahead and make sure you uh, set the um, reminder on that space. We'll go ahead and send you a couple DMs on the course of the day just to let you know what time is starting. So you guys pretty much know it's already 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So until then, we'll see you guys tomorrow night. Y'all have a good one. Everybody take care and be safe.